<laughs> well, there, you, there we go. That's the, the question that shall not be named. Yeah, that's um, may, that's something that when I die, like my gravestone will will be it will say like you know why yeah, but why is there no network multiplayer? Like, uh, you know, it's a lot of people have asked that, and I've since learned that a lot of people ask that of every single game that doesn't have it. The reason why we wouldn't do it today is because. Or, you know, if I could teleport back in time with time back then, team back then or whatever. It was, we didn't have the resources to do it. Like, we were not skilled enough. We had never done anything like that. We tried. Turns out really freaking hard. And now people are going to say, oh, it's not that hard. Um, that's the funny thing, because it's a um, side-scrolling shooter. You have so many bullets on the screen, so many enemies. We wanted to have homing bullets, for example. Now, if they're homing, you know, and you have four players in the game, who decides where the bullet is going, you know? Yeah, and these are all solvable things, but it really like starts spiraling into a lot of work and a lot of bug fix and a lot of testing. So it was not even necessarily guaranteed we could have done it. And it was definitely sure that it would have pushed the launch back, which we were sure we couldn't do. We needed to get this game out. And even if we had infinite time, we weren't sure if we could have done it. And then when we were like maybe more confident in our abilities, we were so far along on the development uh, that we would have just... Because to make a good network multiplayer game, you had to know that you want to do that from the get-go. You can't just randomly, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna spl splodge, uh, you know, I'm gonna throw a network multiplayer, you know. Like just, you know, hashtag include multiplayer, you know, and it, that's, it's, that's it. Like it's, that's not how it works. And then there's the like uh, secondary cost that's really simple but often easy to miss is that if we had two programmers most of the project if we made network multiplayer at least one of those people instead of doing what they did they would have been doing network multiplayer which means that all the little things that all of us did would not be in the game and instead you would have network multiplayer like it just would be a different game game with with less of what made it good and so we kind of made this active decision and i would still to this day defend the decision that this is a single player slash local cop game and we want it to be as good as possible as that to add network multiplayer would compromise that it's kind of like hey you know we are making a basketball game but you know let's also add football in there you know because some people really like football and it's like ah yeah but you know then can we make you know the ball has to bounce differently you know ah whatever let's make a compromise you know i'm sure nobody will mind you know it's, it's kind of like that like you end up having to compromise to include more things and we want to do a very specific thing and the more like historical reason like what i remember saying several times and like <laughs> i i like saying sort of this especially when i get passionate about things i say these inflammatory things i remember saying that yeah you know there's you know people uh, i didn't say people i said things that are not printable but um i mean some of some of the people was nice but some of the people were demanding it or whatever it was it made me uh, slightly upset so i said that you know yeah they say that but then who's actually gonna sit down yeah, on team speak or skype or whatever uh with their friends you know that they already have and be like hey let's play Stardust as galaxy warriors or whatever you're already when you're there you already know what you're gonna be playing you know it's gonna be you know it's gonna be league of legends it's gonna be though it's gonna be counter, counter uh, global offensive it's gonna be team force 2 overwatch whatever you already know what you're gonna be playing it's a, actually quite a niche group of people like and yeah it's a thing that would be nice to have like a lot of people like i would buy this if it had network multiplayer, no, you wouldn't. Uh, maybe when it was a super low on a super low sale, but like no, way you wouldn't because you already know what you're gonna be playing when you're friends. You are not our target audience, and that kind of sucks. Like it because there's legit people who were like, oh, I wish I could play this with my, you know, I live in a, you know, I live in a different country from where I'm from. You know, my friends are in my original country. Like even you know Steve, our marketing dude, he, you know, he's an American and he's living in Finland. And he's like, he would like to play with his buddies, you know, back in America. And he can't do that, um, because we don't have network, more, network, uh, network multiplier. I can't even say the word, it's so, it's so rude for me. But like, um, uh, you know, there are people who could have used it. But it's simply just because of the things I mentioned earlier, it just wouldn't have been, you know, worth it. It would have made everything else in the... Like, it would have gotten to a point where if we had done it the people who would be asking for it probably wouldn't even know of the game because it would have been worse game so it wouldn't have been as well re received like it's just uh, it's a really weird question it's a really nasty question because it comes down to you know uh, because you know i was basically you know i did a lot of programming it comes down to me just saying well i wasn't good enough like 
that. In a way, sometimes it feels like that's what people want me to say. They want me to be like, hey, well, wasn't good enough. And I mean, that's true. And I have no problem admitting, admitting it because there's probably people out there who still got enjoyment out of uh, Search Galaxy Warriors. So yeah, I wasn't good enough to do um, network multiplayer. Or, and I could argue, would argue maybe that for a game like this, uh, to make it exactly as SGW is, there might not be a person who would be good enough. Like something would have to change. It would be a different game. Um, no, whether that different game would be better or worse, I don't know. But you know, we, we did what we did and this is, this is where we are. But as you can maybe tell, like this is something I've thought about a lot. And this is, this is what it really boils down to is, you know, we, this is what we wanted to make. I would say yes. Of course, not uh, massive financial success, especially with our uh, current team size. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but um, yes, like for me personally, at least, it was a massive success. Even putting it out there was a success. Success. The positive reception it received was a success. Um, and especially what was success was because it's a. Uh, even though it doesn't look that way in the surface, it's a very abstract game in some ways. And, for example, communicating with some people on Reddit, stuff like that, reading some reviews, to realize that the abstract things I wanted to communicate with the game actually were communicated makes me so happy. Like, there's, for example, I remember there was a Reddit time and people asked, like, what games were your inspiration? Or well, somebody asked that, and I answered, um, that, and that's my answer to this day is that, um, you know, there's no specific game. It's like, I remember playing these, you know, arcade shooters with spaceships or, or flying animals or whatever, and like, uh, you know, um, random like arcades or, or, you know, I was traveling with my parents uh, on a holiday and we, there would be like an arcade cabinet at the hotel lobby or whatever. Uh, no way of remembering what those games specifically were. It's remember the feeling of like, you know, flying to the right and shooting at things. And then sometimes when I shoot things, I think I'm south and I pick it up and oh, now I'm shooting missiles. And I wanted to channel that like childlike happiness of just like, oh no, this happened. And now I just get to blow up more stuff. And I, I said that and then the person was like, well, you definitely nailed it. Or, or something on those lines. And I was just like mentally high-fiving me so hard I probably got an aneurysm because I was like, that was, you know, that's what I want to do. And same thing with the writing of it. Like, because after the music, I think another thing is that's gotten a lot of positive feedback is the writing. It's also gotten a lot of negative feedback, but I wanted to write it. As I said pre previously, I wanted to do like, uh, to like uh, um, Borderlands without the edge was one thing I was saying. That's a very like simplified version, a very like, how would I say, like clickbaity way of putting it. But that was one thing I was thinking uh, at the time. And you know, and, and I wanted it to be silly, but still take itself seriously. I wanted every character to have a personality, but not too much stuff like that. And people seem to have picked up on that too. And also to parts when I, you know, the way I wrote the story, it's, <laughs> It's worth mentioning is uh, one day I was at home uh, working from home. I was like, "This is gonna be the day." Now I'll write all the dialogue, and I made two pounds of coffee and I drank drank all of it. And it was like, you know, my hands were shaking pretty much so much that I didn't need to. When I was writing, I just moved my hands sideways, and they were just automatic clicking the keys. Um, and I wrote it basically in one go. Uh, pretty much. And I was like, okay, so this church is like this, this church is like this. And I had this little like Excel sheet where I would look like, hey, you know, uh, it looks like, you know, Black Bear has been, you know, not having a lot of lines. So I'll, I'll give Black, Black Bear some screen time. And it was kind of like I established how all of the pilots would act. And then I would be, okay, somebody has to start the conversation. I guess it should be this guy. And then this girl is going to say something because she hasn't gotten lines. And then they, they would, you know, respond according to their personality. And there were specific points where, you know, I was writing at them and I was like chuckling to myself. Like, I mean, I was caffeinated. Like I would probably have been chuckling, like watching, you know, paint dry and still be cackling. But regardless, there were specific points where I was, you know, laughing a little bit more <laughs> than, than generally. And those tend to be the points when I, uh, you know, when I see people play this and they, they laugh too. And when people get those jokes, that's, that's, and especially when I, I did some parts where, um, for example, there's a specific part where um, there's the merchant the, that comes after every stage and it's kind of like a running gag that it basically forces the players to shop every time. Uh, like they, they have no option. And then there's something, some point where it's like, he has a sale going on. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do um, a little bit like, a, it's not really a risky joke, 
But there are people who think it's a risky joke to have female trippers going like, as a female, uh, I, I adore sales, which is obviously sarcastic. And then uh, Red Tiger says that, and then Blackberry is like, yay, capitalism and stereotypes. And I was like, you know, based on what you read online, like some people would might, like it feels people might like lynch me for that. Like, oh, you're such a, but, um, and I've been seeing, seeing like, you know, and I've, I've seen people play the game, you know, and then girl, girls tend to laugh at that part. And, I, and I'm like, you know, I, in a way, me, like, look at me. And I reach out to the female audience, so to speak. And I wrote a joke that they laughed at. And like, it's such a weird thing that that feels so significant, but it does. And there are other similar things there too, where I, I like wrote a joke for like a specific group of people and then like nobody most people don't get angry about them maybe some people miss them but then they tend to roughly hit hit the mark and it was it was really nice and to to see that like nobody got and i mean it's super non-offensive i guess but it's still not non-offensive to a point of being just inane or whatever like the game you know it's it's e for everyone but it's not just like you know unicorns farting rainbows or whatever like it's it's you know saturday morning cartoon and it really i feel succeeded in that and that's i guess one takeaway is that you can do like a silly game uh, in a way that is because people are often being like oh it's you know it's me me shit and like i hate it i hate these characters and i wish i could silence them and stuff like that which we are lucky we don't have voice acting because that would probably have been a thing but um but yeah like it's still possible to do that and do it in a way where it enhances the experience rather than be like, I wish I could turn this off. There were a lot of people who said that too. There were a lot of people who were like, I hate the dialogue. It's trying to be so funny and stuff like that. And <laughs> that's another thing. Like it's never really, even though I just said myself, I write these little jokes in there, but they are jokes that um, you could make in a conversation. You know, they are things like a lot of it is written like, it's, it's stuff I would say, uh, you know, to another person. It's not, and it's not trying to be anything more than that. It's not trying to be like a, there's a massive setup and a punchline and everybody's clapping and cheering. It's just things that makes you smile a little bit because, hey, you know, this, this dude who's a little bit silly said a silly thing that fits their character, but also a little bit subverts expectations and oh, it's breaking the fourth wall a little bit or like, it's, it's not, you know, it's just fun. Like it, it goes back to the whole, like everything needs to be fun. So I guess that's one takeaway that you can do a story without like jerking off over it, like oh this is a story driven you know game, but also without it just being like uh, feeling tacked on. And then outside of that, I feel that really big takeaway is that there is some um, potential in this genre, in this like in in doing like a side scroller stuff like that. Like there is something magical to them that is not often tapped. Because they're so often, what they try to do now is turn them into spectacles, where like the perspective changes and you know, it's now it's behind the back and everything. Like just keep the simple basic core gameplay and just make that as fun. And that's really my, has to become my core thesis as a designer is, when you're making a game like, make it boring first, like, like on paper. Like make a, don't have anything, like that, that falls back the whole no gimmicks thing. Don't have anything there that's there just so that the core becomes funnier. Just have the core and make it like as bland as possible. And then try to make it feel good and control good and like timing, time things good and stuff like that. Make that very core just as good as possible without any tricks and without having to rely on any tricks. And then after that, you can start slapping all these tricks on top of that. And then the theory is that, you know, then that will make it even better. Like you build a solid foundation and then you expand from there. But that's of course a very specific way of uh, designing a game. Like you can't do that if you're making say a puzzle game probably because you need to have a core mechanic, you know. But for uh, like a shooter, for action game, I think that's that's a really solid way of doing it is, you know, just back to the basics. Like make it, make it such that when you explain it to people, they are like, oh, that sounds boring. But when they play it, they're like, oh shit, this is good. And But then of course the problem is selling it. So that's what you do with the writing and that's what you do with the music and that's what you do with the visuals. I think we were onto something 
with SGW. Uh, and I mean, it has like 85 Metacritic on, on the PlayStation version, I think. Like, it did pretty okay, um, but we're not millionaires. Uh, now, I personally never expected to be a millionaire, really, but that was an implication as what was in the air at times and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it just, you know, pick up... And like, if I was to give a, like, if the pickup is something I would say to other people, I would say just like, you know, do your thing, but also really figure out what your thing is. Like really drill to the very core of what it is and then do that. Don't be like, oh, our thing is, you know, like we are, like, like our, I think Martin slogan is like lovable rogues making lovable games, you know. So hey, don't be like, oh, you know, we are lovable rogues, and then you do whatever you think that means at a specific scenario. Drill to the core, like, you know, with SCW, like, oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun side scrolling shooter. And then just, what does that mean? Like, hold on to that, and don't dilute that in any way, and then go from there. I think it's, it's my, my pickup. And then I guess my other pickup would be uh, try to have a, try to lock your, um, like, well, not lock, but try to know. I guess it ties in with the whole thing. Like, try to know what you're doing in the beginning. Because a lot of the things that I'm not that happy with SGW are because we didn't plan uh, certain things. Shit just happened. So try to account for that. Of course, always iterate, but still try to. But I think the core is just find the diamond in the middle of, of the thing and just keep polishing that and then go from there. 